Today I'd like to talk to you about the burn surge capacity plan for San Diego County. We have been working in conjunction with the County Emergency Medical System personnel. This is a plan to try to project how to handle mass burn casualties in San Diego County for the first 72 hours. It's a work in progress and input from other medical centers, particularly the San Diego Trauma Medical Centers, is greatly sought after. Let's just talk for a minute about mass casualties with respect to large disasters. The American Burn Association has reviewed a number of mass casualty events or disasters involving explosions, fires, etc. It's come to the belief that approximately a quarter of the patients that will be injured in these disasters are going to have some component of burn injury associated with their overall injury pattern. The American Burn Association also feels that burn centers are the best way to care for these patients. But given that, there's only about 132 burn centers in the United States. Many of these are quite small. And there's only about 52 verified burn centers, which is comparable to the American College of Surgeons Level 1 Trauma Centers. So you can see potentially that we're grossly underbedded and underserved with respect to burn injured patients in the event of a mass casualty. Let's look for a minute at the concept of burn surge. And burn surge is the ability for a local burn center to increase its capacity in the event of a disaster or a multiple or mass casualty event. Our burn center is a medium-sized burn center. We've got bedding for approximately 18 patients, 8 in the ICU, and 10 on the floor. However, when a larger catastrophic event does occur, we're able to move our patients into additional ICU units as well as additional floor units. We're able to surge up to try to meet the demand for burn care within our own community. So if we think about San Diego County, what historical evidence that we might need to take care of mass casualties in the county are related to burn injuries? We actually have pretty good examples of this. Uh, if we remember back in 2008, there was an F-18 crash that occurred in the UTC area. A uh, large fire ensued from that but uh, it was relatively localized to about three houses. Unfortunately though there were three dead and one injured. If you look in the upper left hand corner of the next slide you can see the difference between the aircraft landing in the outskirts of the suburban area versus if it would have uh, landed in the center of the suburban area or even near a school. It could have potentially led to many more burn and trauma casualties. If we look closer at this we can see there are multiple pieces of engine parts and aircraft parts strewn all about. We can see that the explosion resulted from the fuel and the secondary fires that broke out were pretty big. Again, this happened during the day. Most people were at work or at school and not in the surrounding homes. If we go back quite a few years ago in San Diego County, PSA Flight 182 crashed after it hit a Cessna over North Park. The resulting crash seen here ended up with multiple fatalities, uh, mostly from the passengers and crew on the plane, as, uh, unfortunately as well as people on the ground. The surrounding fires and trauma were related to the people that were on the ground. In 2008, there was a plane crash over at Montgomery Field when a single engine plane overshot the runway, crashed onto the median strip of the 163. You can see the fire that occurred with this crash. Uh, luckily, there were no automobiles involved in this event. But if this had happened at a different time of the day, like rush hour, either in the morning or in the evening, it could have been uh, a lot more... Uh, likely multiple burn and trauma casualties that would have been associated with this accident. Now we're going to take a look at the Hilton Hotel explosion of 2008. Uh, this event occurred while the building was still under construction. We can see the explosive damage here from the gas that was ignited during the construction and can anticipate the amount of casualties that could have occurred at any of our downtown hotels should something like this occur while the building is inhabited. Our most recent disaster are the 2007 San Diego wildfires. Uh, we uh, admitted 20 patients into the burn center with an additional 30 patients being seen as outpatients. During this fire as well as the 2003 fires, we had approximately 35 patients on the burn service. We typically run a maximum of about 18 patients. Here's some pictures that uh, show the wildfire advancing into the Scripps Ranch area. You can see the rapid encroachment to areas where people lived. These fires are pretty fast moving. Unfortunately, people found themselves trapped and unable to escape. Uh, burn injuries obviously were resulted from this and uh, unfortunately again some of those injuries being fatal. Looking back in 2003 we had our second largest fire in San Diego County history. Uh, we saw 22 patients that were admitted to the burn unit and we had an additional 28 that were seen in the outpatient area. Given the numbers that were shown in 03 and 07, 
These numbers are pretty much the maximum volume that the burn center can deal with. Uh, the burn center generally runs about 80% of its capacity in any, at any given time. So the additional 20 admits gives us a service that hits around 34 to 36 patients. This is a view of the wildfire of 2003 showing the devastation and smoke. The smoke here becomes an important player. The combination of the smoke and the wind takes down the ability of firefighting and rescue aircraft to move patients from point A to point B. So a lot of times these wildfires that are burning in outlying areas of the county prohibit patients from making direct transfer from the scene directly over to UCSD Burn Center. And this is where they end up in outlying institutions. An institution of particular interest is Palomar Medical Center uh, for the fires that would happen up in the North County area. So this burn surge program is uh, it's going to be an attempt to try to augment our ability to take care of these patients in the event of a disaster situation. The burn center at UC San Diego uh, has eight ICU beds and ten step-down beds. With this 18 beds we have the ability to surge up to other ICU beds and other floor beds if necessary. However, when the, we reach a capacity of about 30 to 45 patients, it starts to get a little difficult to uh, administer the state-of-the-art care to these patients, and this is just simply due to the workload and the amount of equipment that is needed to care for them. The necessity for a burn surge program is a paramount thing for us to plan here. As you can see, we admit about 300 to 350 patients per year and uh, do a little more than 400 operative procedures per year. In addition, there's a very active outpatient clinic here, and uh, we see about 2,500 patients per year. As I mentioned, we're generally running at around 80% capacity most times. We will be able to discharge some of our patients during a disaster, but this is pretty much typically a small amount of patients. What our census is the day of the disaster is typically what we're going to be left to work with. Now we're going to look at the different stages of a disaster. The American Burn Association defines them in three stages. Looking here at stage one, this is where you have the local ability to deal with the patients that are injured, which is typically 10 to 24 patients. Uh, this is what you can see that we uh, dealt with in the 2003 and 2007 fires. In a regional disaster, which is stage two, you have the ability to handle around 25 to 100 patients. Looking into stage three is when all the regional facilities have become overwhelmed and you need to branch out into the state with the care of at least 100 patients or more. If we look at the calculations for burn surge here in San Diego County, the American Burn Association has recommended that we've got about 15 beds per 1 million people. For San Diego County, that would be approximately 45 burn beds that are available during a burn disaster. As previously mentioned, we're able to flex up to about 35 to 40 beds during a disaster, so we come pretty close to the mark of what the ABA is recommending without the assistance of additional facilities. On the other hand, the Department of Health and Human Services has a totally different viewpoint. They think that we should have 50 beds per 1 million people. San Diego County has got approximately 3 million people, which means that we've got a plan for 150 burn casualties for the county. That's a whole different scenario to try to have to plan for. If you take a look at the distribution of these injuries, looking at the top of the injury pyramid, this is represented by fatal burn injuries. Moving on down the pyramid, you're going to see more and more patients that fall into each subsequent category. In between, there are patients that will require hospitalization, those patients with greater than 30% TBSA burns. Then there's those with less than 30% TBSA burns. Then we've got those which can be seen in emergency rooms and either admitted or discharged and those that can be seen non-emergently by primary care physicians. Not all patients are going to immediately need to be into the medical centers, but they will form a distribution between the fatally injured and the walking wounded. The San Diego County Burn Surge Program that is envisioned, it's going to utilize UC San Diego Regional Burn Center uh, as the primary location to care for burn patients. However, when the burn center is not able to absorb more patients, this is when the secondary receiving units, which are comprised of the San Diego trauma system, are going to go into effect. As we talked about before, the initial management of burn patients would be handled by the UC San Diego Regional Burn Center. However, when the system becomes overwhelmed, the San Diego trauma system and in that becomes overwhelmed, tertiary distribution would occur utilizing all the non-trauma medical centers in San Diego County. Also, as we talked about earlier, burn patients would primarily be seen and treated at the UC San Diego Regional Burn Center. 
At the point of overburden, the bypass system is going to go into effect until the other San Diego County trauma hospitals are going to be utilized at that point. Phone communication between these centers is going to be paramount during such a disaster. San Diego Trauma System is a really good system. Um, it's been in place since 1988. It's a voluntary association of the trauma centers in San Diego County, and uh, they've all come to the agreement to care for severely injured patients within the county. Uh, it's a very busy system. Each year there's approximately 40,000 patients that are admitted into the system. Uh, it handles both acute and rehabilitative services, and uh, there is already a plan in existence to care for single, multiple, and mass casualty trauma patients. It's a really good platform in, when, uh, in which to run mass burn casualties from. Take a look here at a pictorial view of the catchment area of San Diego County. If you look at the purple, uh, that represents the area that Scripps La Jolla would take care of. The pink area is for Palomar. Uh, the green area here represents what Sharp Memorial would take. And the peach color is uh, what Scripps Mercy would take care of. The yellow area here is UC San Diego Medical Center. And uh, keeping in mind that Rady Children's covers the whole area being the primary receiving center for severely injured kids. These six hospitals, uh, their medical and nursing directors participate in the San Diego County Emergency Medical Services. There's a committee that uh, they all are in concert with, which is the Medical Audit Committee. Within this committee, decisions are made on how to best handle the injured of San Diego County, and they develop protocols for dealing with the injured as well as handling the movement of mass casualty situations uh, in and throughout the county. Single casualties are going to go to the trauma center where they're given full and intense medical surgical care. Looking down, multiple casualties may be sent to a single center or start being distributed to the other centers to kind of even out the load a little bit. Mass casualties are going to be distributed throughout the county and triaged according to acuity of the injury. San Diego Trauma System has great medical oversight and quality improvement processes that it's run through. Uh, the, the Medical Audit Committee oversees this and it's a very forward-thinking program that can incorporate these burn patients into their overall injured person's plan. Communication in the trauma system is really second to none. Uh, there are base stations that handle the radio calls from the paramedics that uh, not only help them care for the patients, but that make sure that the patients are properly distributed to the correct hospitals. Now we're going to take a look at the emergency departments around the county. And uh, the bulk of patients that are injured in a mass casualty event are going to be the walking wounded. They're going to be bringing themselves directly into the EDs. And uh, it, these, this is a great platform for uh, emergency management of smoke inhalation as well as the emergency management for minor burns. This is a great potential to treat and admit outpatients and this is going to be an integral part of the burn surge program for the county. Emergency department surge is something that is set up throughout the entire county. Um, whether the hospitals are trauma based or not is really not important here. But the emergency department surge is a mandatory requirement from San Diego County Emergency Medical Services and that mandates that the emergency departments are able to expand out and have both urgent and acute care components. Oftentimes this is done by setting up remote tents and trailers in the parking lot of the hospital. This is an example of another good way in uh, which burn patients are going to be able to be triaged. So what we're really talking about here is a 72-hour plan and the ability of the county to take care of itself and its burn patients for the first 72 hours following a major disastrous event. This is not a request of the county, but it's a national request. It's kind of requested that each region be able to take care of itself for at least three days. Patients are going to be distributed throughout the county through a system that we'll discuss at the end of a moment. After 72 hours, there is going to be an attempt to repatriate patients back to the UC San Diego Regional Burn Center or if they need ongoing burn care to try to facilitate transfer of these patients out of your center to other centers that can handle them. So let's take a look at how this is going to work. The UC San Diego Regional Burn Center is going to be the primary treatment facility for San Diego County. We've been able to handle the treatment of burn patients in San Diego County for all of the disasters thus far. The burn surge plan, however, is going to be put into, the, put into effect in the event that UC San Diego will be unable to handle a large amount of casualties that may be seen in a really big burn disaster. We have a secondary triage system for burn patients involving the San Diego uh, trauma system hospitals as secondary receiving centers. 
It's going to be the nucleus of primary and secondary receiving centers. So this is going to kind of follow into the plan for 50 burn patients. Remembering the American Burn Association asks us to anticipate 45 to 50 patients for a burn disaster. And on the other hand, remembering Department of Health and Human Services wants us to be prepared for 150. In looking at a 50 patient burn casualty model event, UC San Diego would admit and treat 20 to 25 adult and pediatric patients that are the most critical. The San Diego Trauma Center is then going to admit another 25 patients with the distribution of four adult centers admitting around six to seven patients each. Uh, Radies Children Hospital would then take the, pa the uh, pediatric patients um, for the rest of the non-critical group. Now, in the event of a larger burn casualty of 100 to 150 patients, tertiary triage and treatment mechanism um, which are the following hospitals, as you see here, will be called upon to provide care. Now let's look if we had 100 patients that require burn care. UC San Diego Regional Burn Center would, as we said before, admit the first 20 to 25 critically injured adult and pediatric patients. The San Diego Trauma Centers would then admit six to seven patients at each facility. Radies would then take care of the least critical pediatric population, and the five remaining tertiary hospitals are gonna be taking about 10 patients each. Now we're gonna take a look at uh, what this would look like with 150 burn patients. Um, once again, UC San Diego Regional Burn Center would be admitting the most critical 25 to 30 adult and pediatric patients. Uh, the San Diego Regional Trauma Centers are then going to absorb the next 25 with the following distribution. And uh, the tertiary hospitals are now going to be involved with each of the eight hospitals admitting 10 patients each, which is going to get us up to around the number of 150. So you can see from this, burn patients will be going, are going to be going off to different areas. So the need for education and support of all these institutions is paramount, and that's what we're doing here. We're going to revisit the injury pyramid that we had discussed previously. And what we're really talking about here are the patients in the two highlighted red categories. Those patients that are critically injured with burn injuries that are 30% total body surface area or greater are going to be primarily routed and taken to UC San Diego Regional Burn Center. The third tier here are the patients that have less than 30% total body surface area burns are going to be considered to go to the other San Diego trauma centers or other facilities if needed. So if we take a look at this very closely, the patients that we're talking about that might end up in institutions other than UC San Diego Regional Burn Center are going to be the following. Patients with less than 30% total body surface area burns. Patients who have only an inhalation injury and that can be taken care of in any regular intensive care unit setting. And the patients that have a greater than 90% total body surface area burn, who in a mass casualty situation would be receiving expected comfort care only. Once again, let's go over these criteria one more time. The patients that we're talking about that might end up at your facility outside of the UC San Diego Regional Burn Center are patients with less than 30% total body surface area burns, patients who only have an inhalation injury component that can be taken care of in a regular ICU setting, and patients who have greater than 90% TBSA who in a mass casualty situation are going to be only receiving comfort care measures. All right, let's, let's take a look here at how patient flow would go. If using the San Diego trauma system model, triage would look something like this. UC San Diego Medical Center would become full, and then we go on bypass. Patients would then be initially redirected to the other San Diego County trauma centers as dictated by the MICN. When the San Diego trauma system is full, the larger San Diego hospitals would then be called upon. Once those resources get exhausted, then we're going to start calling on the smaller San Diego hospitals to be utilized. The non-burn center admission flow would look something like this. Patients are going to be seen in the trauma bay or emergency departments. If it's deemed that the patients need to be admitted, uh, they'll then be sent to the floor or the ICUs. Patients will be left in those non-burn centered institutions for a period of about three days or less. Now, while the patients are at your facility, we need to have a report made to UC San Diego Regional Burn Center of the patient's demographics, if you have it, uh, the associated injuries, treatments that they've received thus far, name of the attending physician, and obviously what, uh, what location you're at. This is just done so we can check up on the patients daily. 
Uh, UC San Diego Regional Burn Center will provide a daily rounding service. Uh, we're going to attempt to do this through telemedicine, telephone, or uh, via computer communication. And this is going to be done to round and assist in managing patients if needed. Now, if patients are still in your facility uh, coming up to the three-day mark, coordination is then going to begin to transfer patients back to UC San Diego Medical Center if possible. Uh, if this is not possible, we're going to need to transfer these patients out of the region. Uh, the UC San Diego Burn Center and the San Diego County EMS will work in, in concert together to arrange for the transfer of these patients out of your institutions to other burn centers in Southern California. It's really important to let the UC San Diego Regional Burn Center handle this transfer. Uh, this is just due to the fact that we are tied into the region's other burn centers and uh, we are tied into um, their burn disaster network as well. Here's a map to give you an idea of where the burn centers are located throughout Southern California. Uh, once and if these uh, centers were all to become exhausted, we can reach out to um, Phoenix there's a large burn center out there, as well as moving north up into the Bay Area and uh, up into Sacramento to UC Davis burn center as well. And that would cover the whole um, southwestern U.S. region. So in conclusion, uh, it's important for us to move ahead with this burn surge program for San Diego County. As with all disaster planning, we're hoping that we never have to implement this thing. But uh, as history has shown, we've had a number of fire disasters and there is a potential for future disaster um, in where we live. We're bedded reasonably well for the ABA criteria for burn beds, but to uh, meet the Department of Health and Human Services requests, we're going to be able to need to plan and handle for about 150 burn patients. That's going to require us to utilize the San Diego County trauma system as well as the non-trauma hospitals um, sitting throughout the county. Working together, the education and training that we have here is going to give us the capability to care for mass casualty burn patients.